In this case, a patient went to an outpatient draw station for routine lab work. The tech attempted to access her basilic vein and missed, then proceeded to poke around. Finally, she obtained the blood sample, removed the needle, and then instructed the patient to apply pressure. The tech labeled the tubes, mixed them, finished the paperwork, and without lifting the gauze and observing for bleeding, simply put a bandage over the site. Within a minute, the patient was released, and when she stood up, she noticed her arm was grossly swollen and discolored. She screamed, and they rushed her down the hall to her doctor's office for treatment. In the repetitive probing for a vein, the tech was perforating the patient's brachial artery. She ended up with a compression nerve injury, sued for damages, and was awarded $60,000. We simply must observe for hematoma. The CLSI standards require it. Observing for hematoma means lifting the gauze and observing the site for the raising or the mounding of the tissue that indicates a hematoma is forming and that blood is leaking from the vein into the tissue. There's no way to know that unless we take that time to observe. Simply removing the gauze and looking for superficial blood on the surface of the skin is never enough. Taking 10 seconds or so at the time of the puncture can save months and months of agonizing testimony and depositions. And let's also make sure that we don't consider having the patient bend their arm up as a substitute for direct pressure. The CLSI standards caution against this. What this means is that if you allow a patient to bend their arm up as a substitute for pressure and they bleed into their tissue and develop a compression nerve injury and it is discovered that you allowed the patient to bend their arm up, that patient's attorney could argue successfully that you violated the standard of care. Instead, apply direct pressure. For patients who are cooperative, they may be allowed to assist, but it is ultimately up to the collector to assure that proper pressure is being applied. We have to remember that when we perform a vena puncture, we're puncturing both the skin and the vein. Pressure has to be long enough and firm enough for both to seal before we bandage. There is no way to know this unless we observe the puncture site long enough to be certain the vein isn't leaking into the tissue. If a hematoma is observed, additional pressure is necessary. No patient should be bandaged without investing the time needed to be sure bleeding won't continue after the patient is released.